Hey everybody, today we are showing you a fantastically cool Honda van you probably have never seen before because these just became legal to import to the US. We're back with Larry, our JDM fanatic. And Larry, what have you brought us? I brought you a 1998 Honda Step Wagon. So these actually were made from 96, but the field deck version was from 98. And so I imported this as soon as I could. And uh, so this is Honda's camping version of the step wagon. And the step wagon was made because the Odyssey was too expensive and didn't hold enough people. <laughs> and so basically, this is a much cheaper version of an Odyssey. But so they call it the step wagon. And literally, it's a CRV transmission and engine in the front. And then um, everything back is like a Honda Civic platform, but it's a minivan, very emasculating. You can feel your testosterone <laughs> being sucked out. But, well, uh, what's cool about this is it's a pretty small vehicle. <laughs> it is, it is. But it's got a lot of room because this seat's eight, yeah. and it does some really cool things in the back. And we're going to start in the back, Cole. So yeah. this is a really unique seating position. What are we looking at back here, Larry? So the, Honda's famous for the seating, and this is probably their most um, innovative. This, they have four positions. So this is in the club version of the, the seating, but it's also got, um, these rotate the other way to normal position and that's your standard you know, seating position. Um, this actually comes down, this is a seat as well, and uh, uh, as well as a table. I'm missing this part, it's in Japan, oops. And then, um, and then uh, these pop up and that's the cargo version as well. And then, um, and some of them even have rotating front seats as well. Wow. So, uh, and then it becomes completely flat as, to become a bed. So those are your four versions, cargo, passenger, um, club, and bed. So you got different modes you can put it in. Yeah, yeah, You also yeah. got the curtains on the rear window so you yeah. can hide things away. Yeah, now, yeah. Um, talk to me about, you know, the, 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 the field deck. So this is the version that has the pop top that just became legal. Are these pretty hard to find in Japan? Yes, these are hard and hard to find and they're expensive and, and coveted. The, the quality, you know, it's Honda quality, so it's good quality and it's well made. Um, and then they just demand a higher price. So yeah. um, this, I got a good deal on this one because it's quite rough. The paint's bad on the front and there's a few dents on it. But, um, and I think I got it for about 4,000 at the auctions, um, you know, you know, it was like eight or nine or 10 when I got here, but, um, but um, it's four wheel drive version. And those are actually quite rare to get this, this version. Plus people like the look of these. They're like popular beach cars in Japan and stuff. So they're really popular. Do you want to give me the camera call? What I'll do is I'll show the inside here. So with the top popped, you got this nice little sleeping deck, kind of like, a, well, there's a front entrance too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did with the, the, what do you call the, the moonroof. Yeah. They added another entrance. You got another entrance there. They, now, they did that as well so that you could get heating up here, you okay. know, in case you, it's, cause otherwise it's shut if you're. Yeah. Uh, you got some vents here too, yeah. which is kind of cool. Now I am noticing at six feet tall, you, you probably could fit pretty comfortably, but it's pretty narrow. Like two folks yeah. probably wouldn't fit very well up there. So they advertise it like two kids up top and then the adults in the bottom. And the two so, kids up top, adults yeah. in the bottom. Because you actually, um, if you make these in the bed, they're, they're actually quite good. Okay. And this actually folds completely flat as well. Oh. So you can extend it so that this one, when you move these seats all the way forward and make a bed, yeah. this can go completely flat as well. I'm hitting stuff. That's but, very clever. So yeah. these can go completely flat so you can get like a really extended um, sleeping area. Yeah, very, so. very cool. Now, are these popular in Japan? Do you see a lot of these? Yeah, the step wagon is probably the most popular of the minivans, and you were there, yeah. and you know everybody drives minivans. Right, it's very, very so, popular. Uh, I think the step wagon, you know, um, they're peppy, they're good on gas, they're well made. Um, now, m most of them are, a lot of them are four wheel drive. So by far the most popular version of the minivans in Japan. And you were saying earlier, these are also super popular in Canada. Yeah, yeah, they've been in, they, Canada could get them, you know, they have the 15 year rule as opposed to our 25. Right. So uh, I, I'm on the Facebook uh, group, which is, I think it's like Step Wagon North America group. And they, um, and there's tons of Canadians on there. So you can get a lot of Canadians are selling the parts, but you don't really need to worry about that because almost every part from this for this car you can get from a CRV of the same vintage. Now let's talk about that a little bit here. I'll, I'll pop the hood if you want to open it sure. up. Sure. So um, what's the engine and kind of what's the horsepower? So it's a B20B and uh, that's you know that's it's the same exact engine and drivetrain that the CRV from the same vintage used. Okay. So it's a twin cam. Um, it's 135 horsepower. I'm getting about 28 
wow. to 29 Highway. And then, but I, 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 right now I'm sitting around doing a lot of idling. So I'm only getting 17 City. It's probably like a five-speed automatic? No, it's a four-speed automatic. Four-speed automatic. Yeah, yeah. It has the overdrives, but yeah. And what's the um, kind of, what's the speed this is comfortable at? Can you do highway speeds? Oh, yeah. I, yeah? I, I came over here easily doing 75 the whole way. Okay, so. and it's not screaming too loud? It's no, no, it's right around three grand. So, and yeah. it has a, it's a Honda, so it has a high red line. I think it's 7,500. Wow, okay. On this one. Yeah, that's so. pretty high. So in theory, if parts do start so going wrong, I take it wrong, back at six. Six. <laughs> so yeah. But if parts do start going wrong on this, because it shares components with cars sold in the U.S., you might be able to fix it. Absolutely. Actually, you can literally take the CRV drivetrain and transmission and swap it out. Wow. So it's the only thing that's only thing that's different is the air cleaner, which is from a GM car. Really? So you don't even have to worry about that. So you can get almost every part you need: the brakes, brake pads, everything, wheels from a CRV or an Odyssey. So because it's got discs in the back use the odyssey brakes for the back but oh. otherwise the brake pads everything um uh, from a crv for the front everything the only thing you can't get is a few suspension components for the front but the suspension in the back is all odyssey did these ever get um the k-series yes yeah. the next generation okay. and that's what i had and it makes a huge difference yeah. i was always so <laughs> impressed at how peppy it was and and it's better on gas on top of that. So let's take a look at the front seats here because that's where you'll spend most of your time. I love the, um, I love this kind of 90s uh, cloth material here. Right, and then this beautiful synthetic wood. Mmm, smell that plastic. It's a lot of wood, <laughs> it is. Larry. Hey, this is like the upgraded version. This is the SMX. <laughs> So, it's which nice is, though. Uh, uh, which is a, uh, yeah, no, actually I love it. It's so easy to drive. The visibility's fantastic. Yeah. Um, that's what, like, uh, so I'm, I'm, I have my Mazda Bongo that I've been using, but I'm switching to this. Uh, my son and my wife like uh, sitting in this car better than the, than the Bongo. The Mazda, yeah. You know? Well, let's look so. at the trunk. Let's see how the trunk space is back so. here. Yeah, we'll go into cargo version. Let me shut that. Um, so, so typical Japanese, um, you oh, know, these pop up. So let me go fold this flat. That's awesome. Yeah, so this uh, it I folds I down. This. Folds down. And then there's a little button, which is, I think, on the front, and then it folds up. So wow. a very, you know, traditional. I, I, so many Japanese cars are like this that they, uh, if I can find it. It's okay. <laughs> might be in the back. But they fold up against the they wall. They fold up against basically. the wall, yeah. yeah. And you got these nice little cargo nets here, too. Yeah. Which is and really nice. It's, we, so we had this car. I had the, it was like this, but it was a slightly, it was a slightly newer generation. I think it came out in 2000 okay. or 99. Yep. So they upgraded a little bit. Um, I actually has to go back a little more, but. That's fine. No, you that get the idea. looks good. Yeah. Um, uh, and how does this compare to something like the Bongo? Uh, so the, what was kind of innovative about this car compared to all the other cars at that time was that they moved the engine to the front and they made it completely flat. For the Bongo, you're sitting on the engine, right? Right. So like the, I can just walk easily between you know, going from the driver's seat to the back when you stop or anything like that. Yeah. It just feels so much more open in here, even though they're the same size. It just feels so much bigger inside. So that's why I really liked it. We had one in Japan, so I already knew. Yeah, right. Um, you know, that, it, it, and the visibility is so good on it. Do you so. like this more than like a Delica? Yeah, see, I, I, the Delica, it depends on which one, but everybody loves the, uh, I think it's a Star Wagon. Mm -hmm. um, I loved everything about the Delica except the engine. And that's kind of, it's like, you know, not liking the heart. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's a pretty big problem. Yeah, it was a big problem. But uh, the Delica is a great four-wheel drive car. It's just, if you've driven it, you'll know it's slow. Yeah. It's slow, slow and dirty and not that stinky. I, I get sick from the diesel fumes. I never had that issue with my Bongo. Oh. But the Delica, I had an issue with that. And that's why we got rid of it in the end. So um, let's talk about, um, we, we touched on it a little bit, but how much do these cost in Japan? How much do they cost when you're all in here in the States? Okay, so I think I bought this at auction. I, I told you already, my, I, I asked my mechanic, should I buy it? But the auction was ending, I bid anyway, and he said, <laughs> don't buy it. But I bought it anyway, because it's rough. But that's why I got it cheap. Um, if this wasn't rough, I would have paid probably double okay. of what I paid. So I paid, I think, around four, um, and they repaired the windshield, that had a chip in it, and yep. those, those are the one thing you can't get um, in the US. Right. Um, uh, and then by the time I got it here, I think it was like uh, with the shipping, it was about three grand. So, you know, it's like seven-ish or eight. 
and then then I it arrived right when I was leaving overseas for three months. So I asked a company, Rocky Auto in Los Angeles. Thank you, you saved my butt, Caesar. <laughs> Um, used them. They were great. Anyway, they stored the car. They picked it up at the port and stored it for me. Um, and it was only like five or six hundred bucks for the whole three months. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I include yeah. the pickup and everything. Um, and uh, so, I mean, all in, I'm like, who knows, ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's, you know, for a car like this. It's pretty it's, good. It's pretty good. It gets good gas mileage, you know. I mean, I'm getting, you know, the Bongo is good, too. I was getting about 24 or 25, but that's diesel. Right. So it's a dollar or plus more every time I... Every time I, you know, per gallon. <laughs> have you had any issues like getting a title registered? No, in no, everything's right now. I'm just waiting for my test. So I, I have my temporary plate, but they, they couldn't get me in fast enough. So I have my, uh, on Monday. Your missions test? My yeah. missions test. Very cool. Yeah, so. So you think this is going to be, is this one of your favorite of yeah. the Japanese vans? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, these cars are just so, you know, so they're so easy. Yeah. They're easy to park, easy to drive. Visibility's great. Yeah. Uh, so, uh. I'll probably keep this one for a year or two. Nice. Maybe. Well, Larry, thanks for bringing it by. Thank you. I appreciate it. And guys, it's good to be back. Thanks for watching. We've got a lot more with Larry coming up soon. <laughs> I hope. <laughs>